another injury here, but we know about Bridgewater and uh, the trade for Bradford. Is it going to be Hill or Bradford Sunday? The Vikings still don't know what's going on with Minnesota and Tennessee. Yeah, I mean, it was Minnesota minus three and a half all summer. Actually, it was Minnesota minus three all summer, got bet up to three and a half. And then as soon as the Bridgewater injury was announced and it was going to be Sean Hill, boom, pick them. Maybe Minnesota minus one in a couple of spots. But over the course of the last 24 to 48 hours, the momentum's starting to come on Minnesota again. Those pickums got bet out. Those minus ones got bet out. Now it's pretty much Minnesota minus two or minus two and a half. Now it's still likely to be Sean Hill as a starter. Remember, Hill was Bradford's backup in St. Louis. He supposedly gave him a crash course on the offense. But you read the quotes from Sam Bradford. It doesn't look like he's going to be ready to go. Certainly not week one. Quote, I've had to learn new offenses in the past. I don't know if I've ever had to learn one quite this fast or in this much of a hurry. So yesterday kind of got thrown into the fire, everything at once, and I think that's how we're going to have to do it. But as far for an exact time frame, I'm not really sure. I think it just takes time. It takes reps. Unfortunately, we don't have a lot of either of those. So Sam Bradford not exactly giving himself a ringing endorsement to be the starter this coming weekend in Tennessee. Teddy, two more in the NFL before we get to college. Uh, they're betting the Jets. How about this? What should we do if we like Cincinnati? And also, what should we do with the with the Lions plus four against Indy? Yeah, I mean, one of the things we want to do here with the market report is give bettors a clear answer. Do I bet it now, early in the week, or do I hold off and wait for a better line later? All right, they're not betting the Jets. They've been betting Cincinnati. Uh, Cincinnati was one and a half, two, two and a half. And it's just hanging on at two and a half right now. It looks from all indications like this line is going to go to three. So if you like Cincy, you bet a minus two and a half now. If you like the Jets, no urgency. You wait. I think you'll see plus threes before kickoff. Similar story with the Lions at Indy. It doesn't look from some of the leading indicator shops. Penny in particular has already moved to three and a half. Plus fours for the Lions are still widely available. If you like Detroit, bet it sooner. If you like Indy, no rush. Could be three and a half. Heck, could be three before kickoff, depending on how that Colts injury report looks over the by uh, by Friday. Yep. Market report continues live on sportsbookreview.com. College football. Here's one of the big favorites that lost outright Ohio. And Kansas won a game, Teddy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and look, let's talk about this point spread because this is a fascinating number. It opened Ohio minus two. Now it's Kansas minus three. There were two distinct, significant syndicate moves. The wise guys have moved on this game. Uh, we're talking about a five-point move. Now, at the end of last year, if these teams met in the, you know, the finale last year, the Bobcats would have been in the range of minus 20 on this field. Now Kansas is minus three. So you say, has there really been three touchdowns worth of difference between these two programs since the end of last year? Well, uh, I think there's some bet on for Kansas here. This has been a morbid program. So they ran Mangino out of town. You had the Turner Gill era, which was uh, dismal. You had the Charlie Weiss era that was dismal. And, of course, David Beatty in his first year last year, 0-12 uh, straight up. They lost those games by an average of 31 points a game. They say, oh, you look good in the opening day win over Rhode Island. Well, they were minus 28 in that game for a team that went 0-12 last year, which tells you about Rhode Island. Meanwhile, here's Ohio. They've been in bowls for the last six, uh, six of the last seven years, but – have to wonder, Frank Solich now in his 12th season at the helm. They got stale a little bit. Solich, you got Solich's quote there? Or you want me to read it, Paul? All right, his quote, after that triple overtime loss to Texas State. Quote, that was a wear down game for me. I've never been around a game quite like this one. I've only been in the game 50 years. The market's thinking that Ohio State might have, or Ohio, you, not Ohio State, Ohio, you, may have a bit of a hangover as they travel to Kansas. This is the this is the horrible. This is just a horrible travel spot. And money came in, in or a lot of money came in early on South Florida at home against Northern Illinois, who lost at Wyoming and the game was delayed a couple the game game went on until early in the morning. Yeah. And here, let me make this very clear. On Sportsbit, we're gonna talk about games that are interesting, where stuff's moving, where you can make money. I'm not going to concentrate on every day and talk about the top five teams or what that. If there's good info on Northern Illinois, South Florida, you better believe we're going to talk about it. This is the story. South Florida was 11 at the open. But the betting market said, hey, you didn't count this travel spot enough. Boom. Nothing but Bulls money. 14 and a half right now. 
All right, now Hawaii was in the ultimate bad travel spot last week. This week, it's northern Illinois. Okay, they're playing in Laramie. By the way, did you know Laramie is the highest altitude of any venue in college football? 7,200 feet. So you're playing a game in the altitude. It's the late game on the board already. It's going to start at, uh, what, 1030 Pacific time. Or 1030 East Coast time, I should say, so 730 Pacific. But then it was delayed two hours for lightning. It didn't start until 1115 on the body clock of the Northern Illinois players. It didn't end after the triple overtime affair until 325 Sunday morning for them. So now they got to fly back to uh, Northern Illinois or fly back to, you know, the, the Chicago, take the bus home, then get back on the, <laughs> hang out on campus for a couple of days, reacclimate, then fly down to Florida. It's not a good spot for Northern Illinois, and the markets are certainly recognizing that. Now, you know, the Wyoming one week and South Florida next week, the longest back-to-back road trips in the history of the Northern Illinois program. No. Huge there. That is, that's good info. Uh, one more, Teddy, and then we'll move on to uh, Jimmy Vaccaro. The service academies hit big with injuries at the quarterback position. Navy loses their quarterback for the season with a torn ACL. Yeah, uh, and look, injury info is tough to get from the service academies. There are privacy issues there, all right? We know the story at Navy. Tago Smith, he's gone for the year, torn ACL. They're probably 7.5 versus Smith against UConn this week. Without him, they're in the 3.5 range right now. Uh, Looks like the senior, Will Worth, is going to take over as Navy starting quarterback. He performed well in relief of Smith in the season opener. You have sophomore Zach Abbey, freshman Malcolm Perry, the kid that got pulled uh, out of the stands uh, to play in the opener. They're moving up to second and third on the depth charts. But this is a loss for Navy. The four-point loss from the markets? I think it may be a little bit overreaction. Here's what the offense coordinator Jasper said. Quote, Will is a really smart football player. He's going to get us into the right play and take care of the football. There is definitely a drop-off in athleticism. That's not a knock on Will. Tago, just like Keenan, Keenan Reynolds, their departed uh, quarterback, was very, very athletic. We will miss some playmaking ability, but Will is good enough to run the option. Now, what's Different go- story at Air Force, though. Yeah, yeah. Well, now, what's going on at Air Force? Yeah, I, I mean, at Air Force, we don't know. Air Force isn't giving up anything. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, I don't know if anyone is going to know if Nate Romine is going to play until Air- someone from Air Force makes an announcement, and that may not happen. All right, Arian Worthman appeared at quarterback for Air Force in the fourth quarter. They were up 31-14, to 14, and there was th- the assumption was that Air Force was just getting their backup some experience, but... Then after the game, it was said that Nate got nicked up. Nobody knows what his status is, and we may not know for a while. Might be a while before we see a line for that Air Force-Georgia State game. I would expect something in the three-touchdown range, maybe a little bit north of three touchdowns, if Romine does play for the Falcons. Hey, guys, for the full video, go to sbrpicks.com. Hey everyone, tune into the MLB Odds Couple Show for today, Tuesday, September 6th. Ooh. Mike Renner and I uh, coming off a slightly rough day. Yeah, it's okay, but I don't like that feeling. It's time to bounce back. It Let's is time beat. to bounce back. Tune into the show and see if we can do it for yourself today, Tuesday, September 6th. That's right, guys. And after Teddy and Paulie, because trust me, they're going to give you some good info. Come on over and share it with us.